Okay, we're going to explore the Netlify functions in this little tutorial. And if you want to read more about Netlify functions, you can do it at docs.netlify.com forward slash functions forward slash, yeah, overview. And then you have some different stuff here to read about. And Netlify functions are what they call a serverless function. That means that you can run functions without setting up a server. And it's essentially some kind of wrapper to the AWS uh, Lambda functions. So Netlify allow you to create these functions in a Netlify specific way, and it will take care of a lot of stuff that can be quite difficult actually with these uh, Lambda functions from uh, Amazon Web Services. So I'm actually quite excited about this because it's very easy to use this and set up. And I'm gonna show you how to set it up with Netlify CLI. So what I've done here is that I provided you with some starter files for this one, and we can check these files out. I created an application with Create React App, and inside SRC folder, I have the regular index file just displaying the app, and the app is gonna be our main file. So what I've done here is that I created a small form. I'm using Material UI, so I have a button and these fields from Material UI, and I also style it in this style file with style components, yeah. It's actually not that much CSS, so could have done it without style components, but I don't actually like the way Material UI style stuff, and I also always use style components, so that's why I installed it. So Material UI and style components, so I have a wrapper and then I have a form, and these ones are style components in this file. And then I create a little form here with a submit, submit button, and I have states for the name field and the email field in the form. And also I have a Boolean that we can set when the message is sent. And then we're gonna create our code inside of the handle submit because in this tutorial, we're gonna have this little form here and send away an email that we're gonna use node mailer and node mailer is run on the server. So we're gonna create a serverless function, a Netlify function for that one. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's make sure to navigate inside of this starter file folder and we're gonna install some stuff that we need. So for this one, we're gonna need a Netlify CLI. So npm i Netlify dash CLI, and I'm gonna install it as a dev dependency. So dash dash save dash dev. And I'm not gonna talk about the functionality of Netlify CLI, so I assume that you know something about the Netlify CLI. All right, that seemed to have installed correctly. And that's the only dependency we need to install here. So for now, it's enough, but we're gonna install Node Mailer, but we're not gonna do this inside of here, and I'm gonna show you why. First, in the main folder, in the starter files folder, we're gonna create a netlify.toml file. And this is where we're gonna configure our serverless functions for Netlify. So inside of this file, we have square brackets, and we specify build, and this will tell Netlify when it builds this project, we're gonna specify the functions folder. So functions equal functions forward slash, like this. So we're telling Netlify when it builds this project that we're gonna store our serverless functions inside a folder that's called functions. All right, very important. You can set this one up also on the Netlify account for your site, but I think it's better to configure it here in your project. All right, also in the main folder, in the root folder, we're gonna create another folder that's called functions, like this. And here you can place all your serverless functions. You can have files and you can have folders, and Netlify will create a serverless function for each file or each folder. In our case, we're gonna have a folder. We can call it send email, like this. And as we have this as a folder, we can actually create a complete new product inside of this folder. So move back to your terminal. And if we check this structure out, we'll have the functions. So CD functions. And inside of that one, we have our send email function. So CD send email, like this. I'm gonna clear the console. And here we can run npm init to create a new project. Yeah, we can just press through them. All right, so now we have a package.json file and we can install some stuff here. And we're gonna install node mailer, npm i, node mailer. So if we go back to our code, you can see that we have this own project inside of this send email folder now. And we have the package.json, we have successfully installed node mailer. So that's great, we can work with this 
And inside is send email. We create a new file. We call it exactly as the folder send email.js. And now we're working essentially on a server. So we're in node la land. So we can't make uh, ES6 imports. So when we import node mailer, we do it the common JS way const node mailer equals require quotes node mailer. All right. And then Netlify wants us to export something that's called a handler. That's going to be an async function. It has to be an async functions function because we have to return a promise. So exports dot handler equal. We mark it as a sync or async function. And this function is going to be called with some different stuff. For example, the event and context. We only need the event for our function. So inside of this function that we export, that's an async function, the handler function, we can place our logic. And if we go back to our browser and read a little about Node Mailer, they have some example code here, an example to send an email with plain text and HTML body. And you can see they set all the stuff up here for us and they create also a test account. So this one could be any SMTP server, but in this case, they create this uh, test account and we're gonna use that also. But you can imagine that you can use any SMTP server you want to send your emails. So you, of course you don't have to use this. So we're going to grab this one inside of the async function here, like this. So I'm on nodemailer.com forward slash about, and you can grab this code there. So copy all of this inside of the async function main and go back to your code. And we paste it in in our handler function like this. They are using let here. I don't like that. So I'm going to use const instead because we're not going to change this one. So that's why I use a const. And then we're going to have some URL params for our function. And these ones are going to be received on the event on the property that's called query string parameters. So first we can console log out the event like this, just to check if we have something. And there's one more thing I want to do before we try this serverless function out. And that is to go back to our package JSON, not the one inside of the send email, the main package JSON for our project where we install the Netlify CLI. In our scripts here, we're going to create a start script for Netlify. And I call it Netlify. 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 And this command is going to run netlify deb. We need to have a comma there also, like this. And this will make sure that we can run the dev server from netlify instead, because if we run the regular npm start, it won't build these serverless functions for us. It won't know about these functions. So that's why we kind of use this proxy server with netlify. So we create this, this start command here for Netlify. And I also remember something, we have to return a response here, otherwise it won't work. So just down below here, we're gonna remove some stuff. Yeah, we don't need this one here. So we're gonna return, and I'm inside the send email file in our Netlify function now. We're gonna return the status code 200, and we're gonna set the body to json.stringify. We have parentheses and we have an object and we're going to show the preview URL. And from node mailer, we're going to get the preview URL, get test message URL info. And this is built into node mailer. It will give us a URL where we can check against an fict a fictional email inbox. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, I think we will be good to go now. So we're gonna go back to our terminal and I'm gonna run npm run Netlify. And as you can see here, it starts up another dev server that's on 8888 instead of 3000 as the regular Create React app dev server. So it's very important to use this one instead. And how do we use our function? Well, we create a forward slash dot netlify dot forward slash functions. That's our folder with the functions. 
And then we have the name of our function, and that's send email. And we press enter. And here you can see it gives us a preview URL. So it seems to be working. We can grab this URL and paste it in here. And you can see that it will give us this virtual inbox. So this one is foo bar. And we're going to adjust this now to take into consideration our little form where we can type in the username and the email because now the function is working. So we're going to modify it a bit. So go back to your send email file and we can still console log out the event. We're going to have a const called username equal from the event. We're going to grab, we have a property that's called query string parameter parameters and dot username. We're going to send in a URL param that's called username. And then we have another const user email equal event dot query string parameters dot user email like this. So that will give us the username and the email that we send from our form in React. And we can leave this as it is. This one also, but here we can change some stuff. I want this to be from uh, me, from Thomas Webenfalk. Yeah, I can change this to Thomas exa at example.com. If you use example.com, that will make sure that this email won't get sent anywhere because this is generally used when trying out email addresses. If you just type something in, there may be that someone has that domain and will get some emails from you. In this case, we're using this test account, so it won't send any emails anyway. But if you use example, it will make sure that this is guaranteed not a real email address. And we're going to send it to, to, to someone at example.com. We can have a list of receivers here if we want to send to multiple recipients. Another one at example.com subject new user registered and text and here we can have the text so instead of this regular string i'm going to have double back ticks and create a template literal and i'm going to type out name registered registered like this and then I grab with a dollar sign and curly brackets I grab the username comma email registered colon and then I have a dollar sign and curly brackets and I grab the user email like this and then we can do the same here for the HTML version Inside the B tag, I paste in the same stuff here. And I have to change these ones to backticks as this is a template literal also. Uh, maybe want to have some BR. Place them on a new row. So here you can create your HTML template. So this will be fine for this example. And we can console log this out. So this should be it in this file. So we can try this out if it works, because now we can send in these params, username and user email. So go back to our server that's on 8888. So we have our function here, and now we can add URL params just as usual. So we have a question mark, username, it's going to equal to Thomas. Then we have another URL param, and we have an ampersand before, and we have the user email, it's going to be Thomas at example. Dot com and we press enter and this will give us a new preview URL hopefully remove this one and paste this one in okay so you can see that we have it okay yeah I should have had of course some breaks here also username br yeah, we can have two of them actually Save it, go back. I'm going to run the function again. And I get a new link here. Yeah, like this. And then you can see we have the name registered, Thomas. We have the email registered. And we have 
the subject, new user register. So this one is working now, and that's great. We know that our Netlify function is working. We can send in this URL params. So go back to the app component, and inside of here, we're going to do something in our handle submit. So first, we're going to check if, if we have a name and email. Then we're going to do something. Otherwise, we won't do anything. We have const encoded name. I want to encode this name because we're going to have space and stuff when you type in both of your names, for example. So I'm going to use the built-in encode URI component. And this will make sure that it encode correctly. So we have the name. And then we have const encoded email equal encode URI component email. So we grab these ones from state. We're going to have them in the state when we type something in our text fields. Uh, and then you can see that I also marked this one with async or async because we're going to use our serverless function. And that one is a promise. And we're going to use fetch. So that's why I mark it with async. Const sent email equal. We await this one. And then we await again because we're going to convert this to a JSON. And when converting something with JSON, it's also async. So that's why. So we have the fetch. And then we have this long URL. And I have double backticks because I'm going to use the template literal. I have a forward slash dot netlify. And this is the relative path to our function. Then we have the functions folder, functions, send email. We're going to have a question mark username equal dollar sign curly brackets encoded name. Then we have an ampersand user email equals sign dollar sign curly brackets encoded email. And then at the last parenthesis, we're going to have dot JSON. So that's why I have double awaits. And when this is sent, we're going to set is sent to true. This is a Boolean I have up here to check if someone has sent something from this form. And then I'm going to display, in this case, message sent. So I remove the form and I just display message, message sent because you shouldn't be able to register more than once. And then we can also console log sent email because this will make sure that um, sent email, I forgot a T. This will make sure that uh, we can get that URL to that fictional inbox. All right, save this file. This is everything we have to do. And hopefully this will work. And now we can go to localhost 8888. Hopefully this will work. I don't know if I have to restart the dev server. I don't think so. Thomas Webenfalk. Or Thomas Webenfalk. That's in Swedish. <laughs> Thomas at example.com. And I submit it. Message sent. And we have the preview URL. I grab it, paste it in. And you can see that we have my name and the email here, and it's working. And we're successfully using a server without really setting up a server. And this, this is what's so great about serverless functions. And as you can see, I hopefully at least you can see that Netlify makes it pretty simple to utilize these functions. You don't have to set up your own mail server or anything. We create these functions inside of here, and we can keep them close to our code so that we know where we have them, and we don't have to have a separate server for this. I think this is awesome, actually. I think it's very, very neat. So I hope you learned something in this tutorial. Netlify functions, they are awesome. And I'm probably going to use them a lot in the future. And as always, please support me by subscribing to my channel and spread the word about my channel if you like the stuff that I'm doing. And hopefully I'll see you in another one.